This is an unremarkable piece of metal, but it has a fascinating coating technology on top. The black color is from a process known as phosphate conversion coating, but it's probably better known as parkerization, and it's commonly used on firearms. This process leaves a thin black coating on top of steel. This helps prevent rust and improves wear resistance. The coating process itself is simple, fast, and relatively non-toxic. Today, we're going to coat some metal and take a look at the microstructure to understand how and why it works. Right, so these parts that we're coating are little steel clamps used to hold tools in my lathe. I machined them out of 4140 alloy steel. 4140 is slightly rust resistant, but it's not like a stainless steel or anything. So without some kind of coating, these parts will pretty quickly rust in the wet environment of my lathe. There are a ton of different coating options, but I have this bottle of manganese parkerizing solution sitting on my shelf from I don't know what, and I thought it'd be fun to try. This is my first time parkerizing, so we'll see how it goes. The basic process is very simple. First, we scuff up the surface with some polishing pads or sandpaper. The directions say that this makes a thicker and more robust coating compared to a perfectly smooth metal surface. Next, we thoroughly degrease the parts. I'm using an ultrasonic cleaner filled with Alkanox detergent. Then you flush the parts with water to get rid of the detergent, and I rinsed a few more times with acetone and isopropyl alcohol, just to make sure there's no organic contaminants which would inhibit the coating process. A pickling step with acid is sometimes recommended to remove oxidation, but since these were freshly milled, there's no real oxidation or rust, so I skipped that step. Next, they are immersed in hot parkerizing solution. This is basically phosphoric acid with dissolved manganese and probably some other proprietary ingredients. The hot phosphoric acid reacts with the iron in the steel and generates hydrogen gas, which we can see here as bubbles. This reaction increases the pH of the solution right next to the metal and causes the manganese to precipitate out as manganese phosphate. Some of the iron also reacts to form iron phosphate and deposits at the same time. These phosphates cover the surface of the metal until all free surface iron has been reacted, and then the coating process stops. The parts are removed, rinsed thoroughly in fresh water, and then dunked in something like WD-40 or alcohol to remove the water. Finally, they are coated with a light oil. This part hasn't been dunked in oil yet so that we can get a clearer look at the coating. And we can see that I didn't do a great job. The coating looks inconsistent and almost entirely missing in places. I have a few ideas why, but let's pop these into the electron microscope first to get a better look. Here's the plain steel surface prior to coating. Not much to see, it's basically flat metal surface with some light tool marks from the end mill. The darker splotches are mostly organic contaminants that didn't get cleaned off entirely. In contrast, this is the phosphate coated surface, and we can see that it's much rougher than before. The surface is basically a rough forest of nodules, cracks, and crystal growth. This protects the surface through two mechanisms. First, the iron surface is physically covered by that phosphate layer, limiting the amount of free iron that is exposed to corrosive elements. Second, as we can see in these images, the surface is just really rough and porous. When coated with a light oil, it acts like a sponge and retains oil on the surface. This thin film of retained oil prevents water from reaching the iron and stops rusting. The phosphate layer itself is very soft, similar to the hardness of copper, but when combined with the thin oil film, it helps prevent sliding wear against other surfaces too. Unfortunately, we can see that uh, the coating's just very inconsistent and patchy. Some locations look like big smooth sheets with cracks through the middle. I suspect the underlying metal here was too smooth and I didn't scratch it up well enough, causing the phosphate layer to grow as a single sheet without much roughness. Since the point of the coating is to be rough and porous, these smooth sheets are unlikely to help much, and they also look like they would flake away pretty easily. There's also a big variation in crystal size. Some areas are very fine and needle-like, while others are kind of like blobby and mushroom-shaped. 
and some spots just don't seem to have much coating at all. All in all, these honestly don't look that great, either by eye or under the microscope. So I decided to strip the parts and try again. This time around, I hit it thoroughly on all sides with a 120 grit sanding wheel to ensure a consistently matte, rough finish. I also increased the temperature of the phosphating bath. I think it was a bit too cold last time. And the results look much better. Still a little splotchy in places, but nice and dark and relatively consistent. Under the electron microscope, the coating looks a lot different from the first attempt. It seems very even across the whole surface. The crystal growth itself is much smaller and more consistently sized. We don't see any big cracks and the surface looks nicely porous. This is probably what you want in a coating, a nice, consistent, even surface with same size crystals everywhere. If we scan it with an atomic force microscope, we can see the topology in three dimensions. It almost looks like a field of boulders, where each crystal grain is about 5 to 10 microns. And just for fun, here's a comparison against a fresh machine surface. The difference in roughness is really huge. Once coated with oil and the excess wiped off, the parts look honestly pretty good in my opinion. Certainly not bad for an hour or two of work, although we'll see how well it stands up to abuse once I start using them. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. Just a short video, but I thought it was neat to see how a common coating like this worked at a microscopic level. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.